What are hydrogen bonds? Well, we are at Dr. Atkinson's secret lair and his plasma generator is overheating. What can he do to remove the energy from it? Switch on the sprinkler system. Well, that alarm is driving me crazy, especially since I have to press the number two button to make those lights flash. Lovely. So, liquid water. When it is heated, like it is being there, what happens to the bonds? Well, the first bonds to break are the weakest bonds. These are the intermolecular bonds, and they're called hydrogen bonds. They hold one water molecule to the next one. Now the liquid water has turned to gaseous water. But if the temperature reaches about two and a half thousand degrees centigrade, there's even more energy now, and that can break the intra molecular bonds, the covalent bonds, and now you're in trouble. You've just made oxygen and hydrogen atoms, an extremely explosive mixture, which one spark will detonate. With the Fukushima disaster, they were concerned this was going to happen with all the water from the tsunami. There was a hydrogen explosion, but it was from a different chemical uh, reaction. So let's look at the words intermolecular and intramolecular. There's me, and when I phone my mum in London, I use uh, the internet between one country and the next. But when I want to talk to the little fat guy in the next room, uh, I use the intranet. And so that's how I remember the difference between inter and intra. Inter is between and intra is within. So let's draw out some molecules that have the ability to make hydrogen bonds. So what links them together is that their melting and boiling points are higher than you expect. Well, there are these extra hydrogen bonds between the molecules. And you'll notice that a hydrogen is bonded to either a nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine each time. And so nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine, you need to remember that. And importantly, that those green bonds are not the hydrogen bonds. Those are just regular covalent bonds. But they do allow the formation of these hydrogen bonds. So let's actually look at these hydrogen bonds. Well, there's the water molecule. And because of the difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and oxygen, the bonds in the molecule are going to be slightly attracted up towards the oxygen, making it a little more negative, leaving the hydrogens a little more positive. Now, if I have two of these molecules close together, the, positive, the slightly positive hydrogen on one molecule is going to be attracted to the slightly negative oxygen on the next. And that's called the hydrogen bond and it is an intermolecular force between the molecules. So looking at the strengths, hydrogen bonds are stronger than dipole-dipole attractions, stronger than dipole-induced dipole attractions, leaving London dispersion forces to be the weakest intermolecular force. Ammonia, that has a dipole, and the molecules are going to be attracted towards each other quite strongly again because of the intermolecular hydrogen bonds finally leaving hydrogen fluoride. Fluorine attracts the electron pairs towards themselves, resulting in dipoles in the molecule and hydrogen bonds between the molecules. So remember hydrogen bonds form when hydrogen is bonded to fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen. Well, those had the highest electronegativities. What, what about chlorine? That's high too. Why doesn't that count? Well, you'll see in a second. So, F, O, and N. That's actually Thai for rain. Fon, tok. Uh, Arabic for rain is shitter, rather delightfully. So why doesn't chlorine count? Well, it's only small atoms with a high electronegativity. And so chlorine's a little too big to allow hydrogen bonds to be formed.
looking at the hydrogen halides and their boiling points, you can see that there is definitely an outlier there. The hydrogen fluoride seems a lot higher than it should be if it followed the pattern of the rest of them. And that's because the intermolecular forces are stronger. Something's holding the hydrogen fluoride molecules together more, and that is the hydrogen bonding. If it followed the pattern, it should be down at about minus 100 degrees C boiling point. But it isn't. It's those hydrogen bonds. And don't forget these hydrogen bonds are a special sort of dipole-dipole in IB land. Why are they special? Because they're strong. And almost always they are intermolecular forces. So lining up the hydrogen halides, you can see that the dipole gets smaller and smaller for the molecules as we go along. Why is that? Well, the difference in electronegativity is less and less. Hydrogen and iodine essentially had the same or very similar electronegativities. What's the dominant intermolecular force? Well, hydrogen bonds, dipole, dipole, but down with the hydrogen bromide and hydrogen iodide, there is still a dipole. But now the dipole is so weak that London dispersion forces start to have a big effect. More electrons, more London dispersion forces. So explain why the first molecule has a higher boiling point than the second. Well, it's all to do with hydrogen bonding. Nitrogen and hydrogen bond in the first one, oxygen and hydrogen bond in the second one. But in the final pairing, notice there are two hydroxyl groups as opposed to one hydroxyl group. And we're done.